everyone, welcome to back my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It was a big week over at CBS, right? On the heels of young and restless four-year renewal, we learned that the network is developing a new black-centric daytime drama that it could only hope will erase the memory of Winter's Wednesdays, episodes in which Genoa City's African-American character storylines finally got a little screen time. And we have a lot of faith in the team behind the gates. Read more about them here. If nothing else, we have faith that they will put something more engrossing on the air than what Young and Restless did over the last few days. Read on and filling in for Candy, who I think said she'd be spending her vacation trying on Barrett's in a dank alley. I'll go over with you what worked, at least for me, and didn't. I can't say that the show isn't more interesting when Jordan is on. Can anyone? I wish a daytime legend the likes of Colleen Zank was being given richer material that actually made sense, but at least she's getting to chew scenery like it's been laid out for an all-you-can-eat buffet. And the character is for sure headed into supervillain territory. How many senior citizens do you know who could shove a grown man into oncoming traffic? Rip, Seth. We hardly knew ye. On top of Jordan's superpowers, she's funny. Not always intentionally, but she is. The madwoman, who seems to carry around more wigs than you'd find in the workroom on RuPaul's Drag Race, spent so much time hanging around a dumpster this week, I was surprised she didn't run into Oscar the Grouch. As it was, she was there long enough to discover that, how convenient, somebody had discarded a full gas can. What's more, only then did Mopey Claire mention that fire is her aunt's weapon of choice. What coincidental timing, eh? Ed. Note. I'm told, and thanks for reminding me, folks, that this is not the first time that it's been brought up. Entirely my bad. But what exactly were we supposed to feel about Jordan's actions? She killed a B player that we hadn't expected to have legs, and burned down a house full of Victoria's children's memories, with none of the kids around to shed a tear over it. Maybe Brian Gaskill summed up our reactions best when he Instagrammed. So yeah, that happened. I'd feel worse about admitting that I prefer drunk Nikki to desperately trying to stay sober Nikki if Melody Thomas Scott hadn't said the same thing. It is a kick though, watching her ogle alcohol in a way that brings me right back to my childhood and Dallas Sue Ellen Ewing doing the same thing. No wonder I never pour a glass of wine without eyeing it lustfully first. Would I have preferred that the episode dealing with Connor's OCD diagnosis not have been scripted with all the subtlety of a jackhammer? Yes, but I still have to applaud the show for dealing with an actual real issue. Somewhere, Bill Bell had to be smiling at the attempt, if not the execution. One question though, I mean, besides why did it feel like the dialogue had been lifted straight from a Psych 101 textbook? Why was Billy in attendance at Connor's therapy session? He's been dating his former rapist Chelsea for all of a hot minute, and while it's nice that he'd want to support the kid, wouldn't he have the sense to guess that he'd be more comfortable with just his folks around? Who am I kidding? This is Billy we're talking about. There's lint in my navel that has more sense. The rehash of Christine slash Danny slash Phyllis has made no sense from the start, and it keeps getting worse. Who is supposed to root for Danny at all when he's basically blaming his wishy-washiness on his ex's obsession with their rivalry? And why on God's green earth is Phyllis throwing herself at this guy when she has expressed zero interest in him in decades? It makes her look desperate at best, crazy at worst. Nope. Wait, worst is Phyllis vowing to stick it to Christine because she's who Danny chose. What a remarkable show of growth for Phyllis. Ugh. The saving grace of this embarrassing plot was Abby getting to snark at Phyllis, who for some reason was determined to have Danny cook for her at society rather than at her place. Melissa Ordway is so fluent in sarcasm, I can only hope Abby develops a keen fondness for flinging zingers. Not sure what the big deal about Ashley's split personality is supposed to be. Her altar seems to have it going on. 
she's pursuing what she wants, Tucker, is unfazed by the competition, Audra, and is basically the life of the party. Why would anyone ever consider trading her back for the real deal, who has spent the last few years running around picking fights like it was the fastest way to get a new CEO job?